Now I've got a pretty interesting pattern for you today. Now I'm not exactly gonna call this one a forgotten fly, but outside of Michigan, I would say this thing is not a very well-known pattern. Now, if any of y'all have heard of this pattern before today, please let me know in the comments. So how did I come across this pattern? It's not in any of my books, and I do have a lot of books. Well, it was sent to me by a viewer named Christian Myler, or he sent me a link to a website called Michigan Dry Flies. Now, this site was created by Tom Deshane, who sadly passed away in 2014, and the site is no longer maintained or edited, but this thing is really a treasure. There are 203 patterns, and yeah, I counted them, but get this, each one of them has a PDF that lists uh, the recipe, has a picture of the fly, and then some tying and fishing tips, and then a little bit of the history of the pattern. So if you haven't seen this site before, check out the link in the description. Tom Deshane really left us with a great resource. So quick history on today's pattern. It's called Madsen Skunk, and it's usually credited to Earl Madsen of Grayling, Michigan. But according to Tom, the fly was actually created by Jerry Weber, who was J.L. Hudson's nephew of Hudson's department store fame. And Weber was a director of merchandising for his stores. Now here's where this really gets interesting. The story goes that this was the first ever fly to use rubber legs. Now I couldn't verify this with any other sources, but I did look through several of my books that were published before 1940, and it turns out I didn't see rubber legs or rubber material used in any of them. So next I pulled out William Bayard Sturgis' Fly Tying, published in 1940, which at the time was pretty much the Bible of our sport, and nowhere in here does he mention using rubber or certainly using rubber legs. So this pattern, first tied by Jerry Weber in the 1940s, could very well be the first fly ever to use rubber legs. So if this story is true, what you're about to see is really a pretty historic fly that I don't think it's got the recognition it deserves. So let's tie this historic, yet very innovative pattern. So there it is in the vise, Madsen Skunk. Now, pretty simple pattern, four materials, but really kind of cool looking. That's what the fish is gonna see. That just looks like food. Now, DeShane's recipe says size eight. It says a size eight streamer hook, and I'm gonna go with my standard Kershank 3X long. It's a streamer hook, hopper hook, all-purpose Kershank hook. I'm gonna put some black thread. I will lay a base down to where the barb was. And the first thing we're gonna tie in is some squirrel tail. Squirrel tail for the tail. And I did put this in my stacker. So let's see if it's stacked very well. I think it's stacked well enough. We're not gonna see much other than that, the white tips, but that's fine. So it's not a real long tail. Let's catch it in right here. Couple of wraps, check our position. I think that's fine. Let's put a wrap under it so it doesn't, you know, go too far down on us. Okay, I think that's good right there. And I'm gonna use medium chenille, I mean small chenille for the body. If you're gonna use medium chenille, you probably wanna snip this off. But what I'll do, since I'm gonna use small, I pull some thread out and make some loose wraps up here. This is just to give my underbody a little bit more bulk and maybe a little more floatability. Just maybe a little more buoyancy. Buoyancy? I never say that right. Do I bob? So let's snip this off and take our thread. Well, no, let's leave our thread right here. Catch in the chenille up front. So black chenille, and this is a small again. I stripped off just a little bit to leave that thread core right there. Get a smooth tie in point. And I'm gonna catch it in all along right here just to help keep this body uniform. Okay, I think that's gonna be fine. Let's go ahead, almost up to the eye, just a little bit back. Now let's wrap this up and catch it off up front. This fly does get messy. It's gonna get a lot messier than this in a second. Okay, so let's just go ahead and put our thread about a third of the way back. So mm, I think that's gonna be fine right there. Now take our white, white rubber, and I'm going to just fold it over. First pull a little bit of thread out. I got a couple inches of thread. And I'm gonna do some loose wraps. That's about three loose wraps right there. Now I will kind of position them 
make sure they're coming off the sides how I want. And that's pretty close right there. Several more loose wraps. And now you can do a few more tight wraps on top of those loose wraps. If you immediately went into some tight wraps, those these legs might flare out like that. You don't really want that. Okay, so now let's take our thread back up to the front. And if you can get that to lay down like that, that makes this next part a little bit easier. So I'm not gonna trim that, you know, that loop up front yet until after I've finished with the wing. And the wing is a fair to medium sized chunk of deer body hair. So let's take this and I'm not gonna be able to pull it out from the tip. So I'll pull it out from the, the base right here. And I tried to pull the under fur out. If I didn't get it, that's gonna be fine. So we're gonna catch this in pretty long. Say a little bit longer than that right there, at least to the, the back bend of the hook. And I'm gonna do this trick, almost treating this like a bucktail. I'm gonna put a wrap just around the hair and now go up and around the hair and the hook. And I haven't pulled real tight yet, but my goal is to keep that bunch of hair on top of the fly. So now I can go with some medium wraps and go forward with some tighter wraps and this stuff is gonna flare. And that's fine, we kinda of want it to up front, we just don't want it to in the back. Now I'm putting these wraps about as tight as I can get away with, with this 70 denier thread. Now here's the step, I didn't see any tying instructions that say this, but it's what I've done with these kind of flies and it does help. Before I let go of this in the back, I'm gonna trim this, not necessarily to size, but just making sure it's shorter than the, the back of the wing. And I'll do this with flies like Madam X's and other things that have this kind of wing and head. And what that does for me, now as soon as I let go of this, that front is significantly shorter than the back, so I'll be able to separate them easier later. So now I kind of just pull this up and take some wraps up through here. And I'm not worried so much if these spin around the hook. I'm really just trying to lock this head in right here. Now I've gotten several locking wraps in there. I'm just gonna put several more right up in here and I'm gonna whip finish it right in front of this big deer hair head. And now since I cut that, you know, took that middle step there and, and cut this front piece a little bit shorter, I can grab the, the long hairs for the wing and now go in here and trim this to size. Okay, and now we can go ahead and just take our scissors in here and then snip that right there. And now we've got our four legs. You wanna trim these to size, of course. I think the back one's a little bit longer than the, the body would be good. And the front one's just a little bit shorter than the back ones. So now take a look, see if we got any cleanup. I could probably sculpt that front head just a little bit more, but I think it's fine. I think this thing will fish just like it is. And how I've been finishing them, just taking a drop of super glue and touching it right there on that underside of those thread wraps and then calling it done. So that's it, Madsen Skunk. I appreciate you watching, folks. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.